Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 20. This is Jesus talking to his apostles. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. These are all prophets except John the Baptist, who was sort of like a prophet, but not. He says, but what about you? Look at your neighbor and say, what about you? Who do you say I am? Well, Simon Peter, I love Peter. He's bold, Mike. Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, amen, Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven, by spirit, by revelation. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, that means hell, will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Everybody say keys. You got some keys. Do you hold keys or do you use them? I think we use them, right? God's got some keys for us today. Are we going to use them, church? I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he answered, then he ordered his disciples, but do not tell anyone that I am the Messiah. Isn't that funny? He's like, yep, you got it, but don't tell nobody yet. God's setting them up because things are rooting and it's not ready till it breaks soil. One seed hasn't been ready for six years until it breaks soil. And that, that, when that time comes, God says, we're going to tell the world. Find three people, shake their hands, and give them my title when all heaven breaks loose. Come on, three people, come on. Wear your plastic gloves, whatever, do a knuckle bump, I don't care, just do something. When all heaven breaks loose. What did he say? I said heaven. Heaven. My voice has been a little gone the last couple weeks. When all heaven breaks loose, man, it was crazy. Did you hear about that? When all heaven broke loose. Y'all so quiet. Are you, are you still full from all the eating over the holidays? Did, you're supposed to have the New Year's resolution, do like a three-day detox or something. Did anybody like start something new on January 1 to, <laughs> at least you're honest. I appreciate that. That's good because most of us will fail anyway. It's got to be all year, you know. We get fired up in January, but what if we took, what if we took that thing forward 24-7 every, every month into December and then we don't know the difference because it's how we roll. You know, it's funny, um, <laughs> don't judge me, but you will. It's okay. It's okay. I'm human. Uh, I wear my AirPods like all the time, and, and especially when I'm at church here, like during off time, I get in a rhythm with my music. How many wear their music when they're doing stuff, like they're tasking, they're doing stuff, and they get in the rhythm, they're just go, 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 and it's, there's a flow to it, right? You, you know, and so I'm t- typically listening to, you know, this is contemporary Christian music only because I'm, I'm a good Christian and um, music's my background. So I, I really love music. It's like the ultimate communication to the heart. And so I, I connect with music. So when I'm feeling down, what I do, I listen to music. When I'm feeling good, I listen to music. When I don't feel nothing, I listen to music, bring back my pulse, bring back my feeling. And so I'm always running around here um, with AirPods in, and, and people will be like, hey. And I'll be like, huh? I, what? Oh, sorry, my AirPods are up. And so usually it's like a little hill song. Maybe Chris Tomlin, if I'm really, I won't go there. Chris Tomlin, he's all right. Uh, but like elevation worship, you know. And so last night, we were up here quite a bit. We we're working that arcade together, and I had my boys with me. And uh, I said, hey, we're driving home. And we, it was just long, a long day. And I said, you want to hear what I turn up when I really need it, when I really need, you know, a little extra And don't judge me, I didn't say when Jesus is not enough. I said when the Jesus music is not enough. (laughs) So I have my my hill song when I'm worshiping. And then I'll go to like the Lion of Judah when I'm feeling a little extra, like I need some bold Christian music. And then they're like, switch foot. And I'm like, yeah, switch foot. I'll go into there like dark horses, get the guitars in there. I said, no, there's even more extreme boys. Don't tell your mom. So. Now, let me throw the disclaimer. We don't listen to any any cussing, any vulgarity, nothing like that, but we like loud guitars sometimes when you need a cold shower. Do you know what I mean? When you need a a, a pulse check. 
And so, can I, t- can I tell you what I turned on? Oh, is it Lincoln Park? <laughs> and then I had to go in phases with three songs. I said, okay, let's start with the Transformer version. <laughs> okay, okay. And then listen to this one. I used to jam all the time. It's called Paper Cut. And then I said, okay, now this one's really going to sound crazy. Don't go there. Don't go there, boys, and judge me. Don't ever listen to this without me. But I, I won't tell them I showed them one step closer in the bridge and when he was just going ballistic. I won't tell them that. I was just saying, listen, like sometimes you need a little extra to wake it up. And all music is, is a love language. And, and I'm not saying to listen to anything dark, but sometimes you need to listen to something loud. That's why you got a preacher preaching instead of talking. I've had this talk with God a few times every year. I'm like, God, I just don't know if they like preaching in St. Charles County. Maybe I should just keep talking to them. They just want someone to talk. They want to talk about it. They don't want nobody yelling at them. And God says, that's the problem. Because you don't preach it in the soil, it don't stick. I said, okay, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really, I'm not, I don't know how to just talk, God. I get fired up and then I just start going crazy. It's the Italian blood or something. I don't even know where it came from. It just comes out. And he's like, keep doing that. Is it all right? We like preaching. We need, a, we need a little cold shower for Jesus once in a while. How many ever been in a cold shower? It's horrible. But I bet you got your attention right then when that water hits you. I bet you got the, I bet, I bet the, the showers got your attention. So I'm challenging you today. Sometimes you got to turn it up so God can dump some cold water on you. So when the new year hits, you can go, oh, oh yeah, man, did I forget that. Woo, bring it back, Lord. So when you need a little extra, Turn it up, baby. Go big. Go home. But don't get in trouble and don't, don't influence your kids in a negative way. Keep it positive. What goes in is what comes out. You know, we don't keep it, you know. Hmm. This is the mission of 24. This is what God said. That we have to bind together in this to reveal God's kingdom on earth. He said, what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What does that mean? That means the church has the power to reveal the kingdom of heaven on earth if they decide to really do it. I'm not talking about this patty cake business. I'm talking about looking the devil in the face saying, good, let's go. I got God. We're taking over. We're letting all heaven break loose in 2024, somebody. Okay, good. Afraid y'all just gonna look at me. Our mission in 24 is to bind together to reveal God's kingdom here on earth in order to loose people from the chains of captivity that surround us, set them free amongst the gates of heaven. To show them there's really a thing. You know, that, you know what the non, I was telling Michelle on the drive here? They make fun of our signs. You know what they call us when, when they're not Christians? They call us um, sky daddy chasers. It took me a minute. I'm like, wait, okay, sky, father, chaser. I'm going to show you that Jesus has a name, that God has a name. Through your, through your act, through your, through your Ill, whatever you call it, through your nonsense, we're going to get to your heart one of these days, and you're going to see that he's not just up there. He's down here, and he's called the body of Christ. That's y'all. And if we show that, they will see that, and they have now broken their own stronghold of doubt because the enemy's pulling the wool over their eyes. This is is too deep for the first service. It's supposed to be, hey, everything's good. Get out our horns and woo, happy new year. (laughs) How many stayed up till midnight? I passed out at like 1130. I wasn't feeling the greatest, so I have an excuse. It's not because I'm like too old or something. I just wasn't feeling great. One of my kids stayed up and texted me at 1230. I, did, I didn't get it till the next morning because I was out. <laughs> uh, how many used to do pots and pans? Anybody remember that? That's back before they had, like, real fireworks. You'd go shoot your own off. Mom, mom would give us pots and pans, and you beat those things at midnight outside. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but it was fun when you're five. This thing that happened to Peter when he says, you're the Messiah, that gave him the ability to do the Great Commission on earth. And that's why he then said, now you'll become my rock, Peter. It's a revelation. And when we hear from the Father, we will see our purpose clearly. And that is God does his greatest work through us. We become clay for the kingdom. So my question for you all today is, our, and there's no age limit to this question, Camilla, 
She's my daughter. She's two. Are you willing to bind up what is blocking you from being loosed here on earth so God may have his way with his people? The power of us binding hands through the mission is what sets the world free from captivity and allows all God's children to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know that scripture too. How do you think they get there? Us. We don't throw Bibles at them. We're not Bible thumpers. We give the word through our life. We demonstrate this. When it hurts, when it's joyful, when it's hard, when it's easy, we demonstrate this, and that is how someone makes it to the kingdom. Because they then become hungry. You don't save them. God saves them. You plant, God waters, and other gives the increase. It, it, it plants in them, and then they, it grows. So, man, like what if 24 could be radical? Like what if all heaven broke loose? Not just in this church, which I'd be happy with that, but the world. We got chaos everywhere. But first you got to say, who is God to you? You got to understand who God is for you to feel compelled to understand the severity of this thing. And when he's just your buddy, which he's, I know I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend. The Bible also says if you endure chastening, uh, God deals with you as sons and daughters because a good father chastens you when you need it. A good pastor talks about the hard part when you need to hear it. And, and, and I love y'all, but I see it all. I know, I know it all, and I love y'all, and I want God to really get in there and change some things. We, we can't live with one toe in the water. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. I'm not saying it's easy to have the revelation, but when God gives you that revelation that it can't work like that, you will see rapid growth. You will see rapid transformation. You will see real change in the people around you because of what you've been talking about when they laughed at you the first time they heard it. I promise that. God said, I promise you that. He promoted Peter because Peter had the revelation of who he is. And I can tell you, it's sometimes a complicated question. I think the two weeks off or whatever it was did me good because I, I sit back and quit preaching for a minute and I listen. I just try to listen to God. Like sometimes there's not enough of that, you know. Like you're so busy talking about it, you're not listening. And, and I, I always fall back to the basics of God's omnipotence and and, and, and bigness and, and un, 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 uncounselable, un, unable to wrap myself around him in that what a peanut I am without him. And so, and so when you keep having that, that's why Paul was so good. He always knew he was so insignificant without Jesus at the center. And when you keep that, that humble attitude, God wants to do something big with you, and, and even though it's for him, he will bless you for it. You can have a good life. You can have money in the bank. You can have a nice car. You can have all these things if Jesus is always the center of why you have and give praise for anything. But as soon as you take your eyes off him and say, I did this, he'll say, I'm going to humble you again, son. I'm going to humble you again, daughter. And so everybody needs that sabbatical for a minute to remember who God is to them. And don't forget it, because you will, because you go numb. How many Christians have been in church their whole life, and they're just like, oh, Jesus is so good. You never think about it, though. Why is he good to me? What has he done for me? What has he not done for me? Thank God for that. We're so selfish. Ooh, I said the S word. We just think God's supposed to pour out blessing on us. Maybe he is by not giving you that. That's bad for you. So who do you say God is? When you can answer it like Peter, God will say, now you become my foundation. Hi, baby. I think it's my daughter, hopefully. Otherwise, I just turned into a creeper. <laughs> he just said, hi, baby, to my child, my eight-year-old. <laughs> I know her voice. <laughs> You're going to, excuse me, <coughs> You're going to experience seasons you did not want. But that's how God's going to show you who he is. My brother used to say, be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. And when you get it, you're like, oh, I didn't know it was going to feel like this. I don't, can, I, can I have a 30-day return policy? Nope, no. You touch, you buy. 
It's yours. I tell Col- Colton goes in. Y- y'all going to hate this. He goes in the gas station. He starts squeezing all the candy bags with the candies. I said, don't squeeze somebody else's candy. We're not buying it. That's sick, man. Like the gummies. He'll feel the bags. I'm like, don't squeeze the gummies. That's gross, dude. Someone's going to get those gummies and say, my gummy's flat. Because he's just checking it out. You touch, you buy. <laughs> God says, you asked for it. This is how you, you reap the benefits of what I want to show you, son. This is how you reap the benefits of what I want to show you, daughter, that it may not be what you thought, but, man, it's going to be better than you thought because I'm going to show you something through that season that hurt. If you never see him for who he is, you'll never be able to live according to purpose. That doesn't mean you don't, you can't, st- let me say it like this. You still get to go to heaven. God loves you so much. By grace, we're saved through faith. When we come to the altar, we still go to the kingdom. But if you want to live for God and be sanctified into a soldier for the kingdom, you've got to understand who he really is before you can go do his will. And when you really get saved, you'll know who he is. That's the good part. God says, if you get it right in here, I'll show you who I am, and you'll understand this. But if you come in halfway, and you stay halfway in the incubator, you're not done forming yet, and you, you stall out there, something's not going to grow. I can preach that because I was in the incubator for like three months. That's a, that's a graphic illustration. My lungs weren't ready. If they never put me in there, and I just stayed in there, I never would have came out breathing. We're going in, we're getting pregnant, and then we're stalling out. we got to take that breath for the kingdom. I get it. That's what it's about. The title is kind of a play on words, have you, have you noticed? Y'all like that? And I remember as a kid, certain concerts. I remember slam dancing. I never did it, but mosh pits. Crowd surfing? Okay. Uh, how many remember, like, watching, like, a boxing match and, like, one coach in the corner after the fight says something to the other coach, all of a sudden, whoosh, like, like, riot, like, there's a thing called a war going on right now. Like, riots, like, like, all H-E double hockey sticks breaks loose pretty easily in our culture. It's pretty easy to cause chaos in our culture. You know why? Because it's fleshly, and anything that's fleshly is easy to subside to. So I'm challenging you all, what if the church of God, that is the body of Christ, there's only one church, the body could cause all heaven to break loose and overshadow all those things where they put down their weapons. I was watching, I like to watch podcasts, and over the Christmas I was watching this I'm going to talk about him in a minute, but I won't give you his name yet. And he was talking about the, um, man, I'm so bad with history. It was like the German War of 1911, or it was, it was, ran, this is so bad because this is super famous, and I'm going to butcher it, but it ran into Christmas morning. How many know what it was? What the war was? But you, you track it with me. Okay. He said in the middle of the fighting, they realized they all wanted the same thing just freedom. They were being told to fight for one thing. When they met their enemy, they realized their enemy wanted freedom too. And they decided to secretly cease fire overnight and have Christmas because somebody put up Christmas lights. And so the, the, the countries back at home think they're fighting and hating, and they're, they're like having turkey dinner. I'm paraphrasing. But they're, they're like, we won't shoot. You don't shoot. And they're they're realizing they're all hungry for the same freedom. That's what peace does. And actually, at the time, when, when they found out they were making peace, it was punishable by, de- by death if any soldier got caught not attacking upon, among the presence of the enemy. And so, so it was this crazy, like, th- th- conundrum. They were stuck in, like, do I attack the enemy? He just wants freedom like me. And so, and so when you think of peace on earth, it's, it's, uh, man can't do it, but with God, all things are possible, right? Like, if heaven could invade the earth and at least get, part, get rid of part of that, like, like everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants freedom. And there's only real freedom in Jesus. 
And so the opposition fights that. The opposition fights for carnal reasons. We fight each other for carnal reasons. But when all heaven breaks loose, lions will lay down next to lambs, the Bible says. People will put down their weapons, and they'll love each other because they see God. Do you believe it? I don't always. See, you thought I was waiting for you to go, yeah. Depends when you ask me. Because I know people, but I believe God gives us the ability when he's in us to do immeasurably more, to do the supernatural. The, um, the, it, it, this is funny. Uh, it says, oh, God can do the impossible. Then it's not impossible if God can do it. God can do something with a little peanut idea and turn it into a church that will grow and do something for the kingdom. And, and every church planner that's ever planted a church and it grew, like God took an idea and did the impossible because of faith. And so, so you got to be a little crazy. You got to be a little crazy with your faith if you really think God's going to do something. Yeah, it's going to look funny. I'm going to look a little crazy. How many crazy Christians we got in here besides me? Come on, somebody. You know, you give them the crooked eye look like, remember Zeus from uh, Friday? Did I say that? Remember Zeus, the big guy, he, he well, hello, and he look at you funny, and you're like, whoa, he's crazy, and he's like seven foot tall. You got to get a little crazy about this. Well, that's crazy faith, but I'm not crazy. Well, the world will say you're crazy, so you might as well just take the label, because faith in the world is crazy. They spent what on 150 road signs? They're crazy. They believed in this daddy sky chaser. They're believing in nothing. You can't tell me no different when I'm 25, speaking in tongues, the power of God flowing out of me, and I'm trying to figure out, what is this? And Joel says, this is that. I don't need nobody else's confirmation because God made me a believer in the moment. Nobody else did. Even my parents who taught me my whole life, this is the way to the Lord. It didn't resonate until God did it for me. You can, you can clap for that. That'll make you do crazy. Stuff. That'll make you lay on the floor when you're tired on concrete. It don't matter because you're crazy about this. What if all the church got crazy for God like that? What could Israel do? Well, they're just too small, yet they're defeating giants over and over and over. But when they got comfortable and they're more worried about their comfort than God's purpose, the enemy won. I gotta be careful because I'm just raw and I'll give you more than maybe you want. Good preacher knows how to steer. Ah, forget that. If God's people don't understand, they won't follow the way God called to follow. So they've gotta we've gotta be taught so we can teach. And then we gotta preach that thing. That's why preachers get fired up. And people that don't know church, they come and they go, why do they yell? It's because they got to keep preaching the soil even to their own heart because they forget. It's been since the dawn of time. It's not just St. Charles County. It's Israel circling the mountain. What would it look like if all heaven broke loose in 2024? one seat church. This is just what we've been waiting for. This is what we've been waiting for. The status quo in your Christian walk is no longer it. You need a cold shower this January to say, God, show me what this is about. This is life and death. I don't get it. He's talking crazy. Spiritual life and death. You got to turn up or you'll tune out. Jesus says, I'm going to wake you up. How many of you seen like the, um, the coach after the football game, they sneak up and they dump the Gatorade on him. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Try getting in a cold plunge, coach. That ain't nothing. That's bath water. Or how many get in the shower and they run out of hot water and they're like, oh, it's so horrible. Anybody? Nobody wants to even, like, lift a finger. Come on, can I get a finger? Does everybody lift a pinky if you, if you, like, if you like warm shower water? Okay. 
you don't get your attention, when it shocks your system, God's got to shock us. I'm not saying God sends everything that hurts. I don't believe that at all. But God knows what's happening in our life for a reason. And everything that shocks us from the enemy, God will still use. But sometimes God's the one dumping the water on you because you need it. He says, wake up. Don't you all remember the seven churches in Revelation? God is good. God is good. Uh, uh, what was it, Frankenstein Church? Dump some cold water on that thing. Get a pulse back. God's plan is for us to work together to shift the access of the world's perspective of him. It's like a seesaw. Sometimes the church is down here and the people are up here. And you got people saying, yeah, God is good, but that's not the church. To be the church and to talk about Jesus are two different things. Okay, so, so our job is to shift the playing field, the access point to where the shadow of God's spirit comes up over the people, and, and it's a light, actually. I think it's so funny that he, he got them all pumped up, and then he said, now, just wait a minute. Verse 20, Caleb. He says, then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, God is setting something up so that the church is aligned first. Because when it's time, that's when all heaven breaks loose. And if it's not aligned, it's a riot. It's chaos. But when it's aligned, God will overcome anything. And you'll see people fall to their knees that you thought were untouchable by God's word. Because when it's time, once he's six years old, plus one year of planning, this coming Sunday, and I'm tired of telling y'all the time's coming, this is the time. 2024 is the year. I said, God, we're ready. 2024 is the year. We didn't do all this to drag it out. We need to win hearts. We need to flood this place with people. And then I said, God, it's not your fault. God says, I, I want them there. I said, God, prick their heart that they have a desire to come to you. Because God, so long, I just say, God, you're not doing enough. God said, I've been doing it all along. But they've got to reciprocate their mustard seed, faith. Because if you don't reciprocate faith in the seed, the mountain doesn't go nowhere. That's why churches die. Churches really do die. They don't, they don't spring up out of nothing, and they don't last with nothing. The church is the body of Christ. The building is the fruit of the people. And when the people come, the church moves mountains, and it keeps moving. And 2024 is the year. I declare it now. This is the year. We're going to do it. Who's with me? This is the year. You can stand for that because we've been waiting long enough. We're ready. Six years is in elementary school. We're ready to turn it on, and we're going to do it all the way this year. And that's through all of us together, through our giving, through our faithfulness and attendance, through our faithfulness and serving. It all makes this ship sail, okay? We need you. We need you all in. You will be blessed for it seven times 70. I can preach to that because I got so much in my life, I can't even keep straight of it. I got to take it out. We bring more cardboard here from our house. We could build like a third world country of cardboard homes. We got so much cardboard because we are blessed, baby, and I don't want that. I want God's people to see that he, they can have that. The keys are within reach, but you got to turn the key. You got to want the key. And you got to use the key. Our hands are full. Well, we got all these gifts we, we got from the in-laws, and I don't even know. We're going to donate half of them because they <laughs> – I'm making fun of my own <clears throat> in-law journey. <clears throat> we used to get flooded with Christmas gifts. One time there was 50 gifts just from my mother-in-law. God bless her heart. I'm not, I'm not knocking her. Don't be upset. But you can only consume so much. God says, if I give it to you, you're not supposed to hold it. 
You didn't get that promotion to go just, just burn that thing. Bless somebody. That's my money, says the Lord. I don't like that. I don't like that. God says, I gave you the job. How do you think you got in that position? How do you think you got that nice chair? <laughs> well, the owner, you know, Amazon. Yeah, sorry, God didn't do that one. <laughs> the keys are in reach. God says, when you're ready, Peter, you become my rock. Until you're ready, you can't be my rock. You're still clay. You know what clay does when you put it together? It gets hard. It forms a foundation. But when it's fresh clay, it's just like putty, right? You need a good red, rocky clay like St. Charles County has all over the grounds. It's great for building homes. If you want something firm to stand on, we know we're supposed to stand on Christ. What do you think you are as the body? When we discover what we're standing on is solid, we become the ground for the world to stand on. We represent the kingdom. We are the foundation. We become the foundation. We keep looking at what we're standing on. We already know that now we become what people stand on spiritually. I'm not saying let them walk all over you. The body of Christ. What do you think that is? The marriage to the bridegroom. What do you think that is? You are Christ in action. And if you're not acting as a foundation to change lives, you're not acting. This is not a TV show. We're talking about action, not thespian acting. The keys are in reach. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you about this. This guy I love, I watch on YouTube. How many know Jocko? Jocko Willink. How many like Jocko? He's a former Navy SEALs commander. And no pun intended, man, he's good. Because he takes, he's not talking about God, but at the root of his energy is God. And he's got this video. And I just watched this video like 50 times in the last two weeks. Because when you are tired, you, you can kind of fall yourself into this little violin and cheese thing. Life's hard, and it is hard. But there's a point where you got to look the devil in the eye and say, good, I got the Lord. The video is him talking about when he was in war. You got to go watch it. It's only like three minutes. His, his platoon would come to him, and they're like, oh, we're getting attacked, this, that, that. And he'd look at him, and he just gave me that crazy look that I know for Jesus. He said, good, good. He said, so, so they're shooting bullets at us. He's like, good. And he grinned at them. And every time they come, they say, we know what you're going to say. You're just going to tell us good. He says, yeah, because good's going to come from that. There's a point. This is good preaching right here. You got to get this if you get anything today. There's a point where you got to quit letting the devil just kind of drag you along. And you got to kick him down and say, good devil. I've got Jesus. God is good. Good. You think you can win? Uh-uh. Because I got the Lord, and I know where you end up in, in devil for eternity because you're a liar. People think you can't preach the devil out of your house. Of course you can. You've got the power of God. The Bible says the enemy's fleeing among the presence of, of the Lord. So, so, so you're not supposed to be intimidated by this lie. Get out of my house, devil. I've been preaching that for six years. I'll go in my closet. Get out of my house, devil. But now I'm like, good. When it's got to get bad enough, you got to dump the cold water on. You got to turn the Lincoln Park up and you got to look at that and say, good, bring it on. I like that. And you got to get a little crazy about it. You're thinking, no, you're just crazy. You may be so, but you got to be a little crazy for God to see a mountain move. You got to be a little crazy to see Lazarus walk out dead from a tomb. I smelt his body. It was rotten. I know he was dead, but he got up and walked out. That's crazy. He's getting you to go hang out with Legion. He's wacky. I saw Lazarus walk. Good. You're going to leave here every problem you face this week, and you say, good, I got the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I fear no man because the Lord is my strength. That should pump you up to know you got this. You got this. 
Look to your neighbor, tell him, you got this. Look to your neighbor, tell him, I don't know what you're going through, but good, you got this. Because God's got you. I love that. Is this good? Is this, no pun intended. Is this helping somebody? Vince, you want to know something funny? You'll appreciate this. Vince and my brother are like the same age. They were, they were fun. They were fun. They were, they were kids together. And I called my brother. I said, I got this video. Man, it reminds me when I was like 15. You looking at me saying, good, bro. I said, you look just like Jocko. I said, I said, Michelle, I've been hearing this from my brother since I was like 14. Just a little bit of crazy. Good. When I got across a little bit for it to be really good. Good. Got a little twitch going. Good. But there's something in that that will ignite a fire in you to go after it. Quit being bullied and become the lion in the lamb. Jesus is king. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. That's what happens when all heaven breaks loose. That's what has to happen for heaven. The thing we pray for every year, oh, God, just do this. God's about to do a big thing. This is how he does it. You got to do it. The keys are in reach. A footing in the foundation of Jesus is what gives us the ability to reach and grab the keys. God is calling somebody today to grab the keys, to open the gate, to allow heaven out of its cage. Well, we just want to keep the poodle in our purse. We call that Jesus, the poodle purse. No, no, no let Jesus out. Let him be who you are. You know, Todd White, he's a little radical, but man, you know what he thinks when you meet him. He wants to pray for you. He loves you. Jesus loves you. Like the guy reeks of Jesus in a good way. I could never be that. That's his calling. But we could have 10% of that. Oh, my Lord, what could St. Charles County be? Amazing. Watch this. We're going to jump up two chapters to Matthew chapter 18. And here Jesus is saying this again. 18 through 20, he says, truly I tell you, we were just in chapter 16, now we're in chapter 18. And again, he says, truly I tell you, tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, it's going to be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you are on earth agree about anything that they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three, there's more than three in here, gather in my name. There am I. All you need is two or three. What happens when there's 2,000 or 3,000? There I am in the middle of that. That's not just sitting. That's acting as the body because the body draws the power of God through its behavior. When we worship, God comes. When we praise, God comes. When we act with physical action, God shows up in the middle of whatever mess it is. That's how you get loans you're not supposed to have. That's how you get things you shouldn't be touching. Because, hello, light. I just preached the light out. Those are LEDs. They're supposed to last 30 years. We got about 10 extra, so I guess we're good. Our tech overcompensated by about 10 lights on accident. So now we have a surplus. So if one goes out, hey, we can have that happen 10 times. <laughs> I don't think the bulbs are changeable. I don't even know. But Jesus emphasizes this again, that the church is power in numbers. The pastor is not power. The church is power. I can act real strong, but I'm nothing. The church is the power because the church is the body. I'm a messenger. I send messages. Send ones you like, send ones you don't. That's okay. I told God I'll just send whatever you want me to send, Lord. He said, good, because that's what they need. The church is powerful only in numbers. He says right there, two or three, then I'm in the middle. God will move mountains in numbers. He said in 1820 right there, uh, he says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. 
The world can be transformed today by our decision to bring God to them. We have to demonstrate. Everybody say demonstrate. What God is calling us to be. And we will change lives. We'll change lives. It's so good. This is in love. I'm not saying go out and attack people. I know we're talking about like the loud music and the thing. That's the fuel you need to get out there and love somebody you don't like. You can stand this morning. What would it be like when all heaven breaks loose? This is good. Stick with me here. I know we're kind of spread out, but if you're willing, I dare you to grab someone's hand next to you. Or if you don't like hands because they're Jeremy and all, I just do like an elbow lock. I don't know. Just lock together if you can, and if you don't want to, just pretend. If there's no one next to you, I get it. Just pretend. This is the church. Now disconnect. Hands. That's not the church. Now reconnect. That's the church. Now disconnect. This is not the church. This is not the church. Now reconnect. That's the church. Now tell me you all get this craziness that I believe we can fill this whole room. And we can go to multiple of these. And we can be praising God and locking arms and doing immeasurably more because of resource ability. It don't fall from heaven. Praise God for all you have signed up to serve in the last three weeks. People are signing up to serve. That's what it takes. We need bodies in here. What if we multiplied it by 10? What if God multiplied it by 100? Do you believe it? Are you crazy enough to believe something so crazy? Yeah. That's why we've been doing this six years. Because when it turns, they go, he was right. God was in this. God was right. We were sleeping when the parade came by. We are the parade. We got we to gotta put our display on and go. Everything has a window. Let's lock hands again if you did. That's awesome. I just think it's cool. Make people, people uncomfortable. I like doing that. <laughs> this is what God will do. I'm going to read you this psalm in closing, and I'm going to tell you a funny story. I probably shouldn't in closing. While we are locked together spiritually, Psalm 69, we're talking about heaven breaking loose today on this earth. Psalm 69, verse 34 through 36 says, let's just read it together. Let heaven and earth praise him. Come on. Let heaven and earth praise him. The seas of all that move in them. Caleb, you got that? Okay, my bad. Okay. You can just repeat it after me. Let heaven and earth praise him. Let the seas and all that move in them. For God will save Zion where you think we are. Zion. And rebuild the cities of Judah. Then people will settle there and possess it. Not be possessed, possess it. The children of his servants will inherit it. And those who love his name, I just say like him, you got to love this name, will dwell there. You want to dwell there? You got to love God with all your heart all your soul. You can clap for that. You can let go and you can praise God in place of binding together for knowing who you are meant to be in this house, the church. <laughs> can I tell you a funny story before we go to worship? And I know, I know you like it because when I say I probably shouldn't, you're like, oh, this is going to be extra good. I had a pastor friend of mine, this was several years ago, who was an associate pastor at a big church under the lead pastor. And I thought, Vince, I thought he was crazy. He said he was at the gym and someone was talking smack about his pastor. And he said, he was talking bad about my pastor. And I was like, man, we're going to fight. I'm like, dude, you, you can't punch people. You're, we're, we're God's love. And I thought he was crazy. And, 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 and that was when I was just starting out. And, and, 
now I get it. Like, we don't want to hurt people. We want to fight with our, our, our praise. We want to fight with our gratitude and the power to walk away and say, good. You want to talk about them? Good. Because God's got this. Good. You're talking about it? Good. You calling us daddy sky chasers? Good. Because we're going to find your heart. That's how you fight back. You don't have to lay down and take that. And I'll never forget it because he was like really mad. Like, you know, you could hear it in his voice getting mad again all these years later just telling me the story. I'm like, you're going to like fight? As a, like you're a pastor. Like, I don't think that's, I didn't say that. I was like, I don't think that's right. I don't think I, I just like hug him out or something. And, but they're not having it. You just say, I love you, man. God is good. Good, devil. Get out of here, devil. Let's go. Turn it up. Turn it up. And that's what I love about God's church is that he gives us power to turn it up. He gives us power to be all in and do this thing and do something that we never get again possibly. And God did this. And we can look back with our grandchildren and go, God really did that. Every church has that story. That's going to be our story. God did that. 2024 is our year. If you could lift a hand with me and bow your head as we praise him through our prayer. We give gratitude and then we go into worship. God, realign us today. Light a fire under what needs to be lit to get us out on the field and turn this thing on. We are days away from transforming this room that no one has seen for six years except the leaders that you've called to start this vision has seen it and it has arrived. It is here. And we're not afraid. We're not going to lay down now. We're ready to turn it up. We need everybody in this mission. We need giving hearts, God, to make this train go around. We can't do it alone. We need them to be all in for your kingdom, God. And when you, when you see your church come in, you will bless your church. There is no doubt that you will bless us abundantly when we become a church of generosity and a church of gratitude. And we look at everything we can pour into this church is because God poured into us and God's going to multiply that thing and affect our grandchildren because of our faithfulness in 2024. We are ready. We give God all the glory and all the praise now. And if God's children can say, Amen.